Hello. So I've made a few videos now with the EP133. To sum it up like a few months later, it's a cool toy overall. And I'm not using the term toy in a bad way, by the way. A perfect classic example of this is the Casio SK-1. I mean, it's pretty much a toy, right? But it does a few things really well at like a pro level in my opinion. So circling back to the EP133, in my mind it occupies this sort of toy category. It's limited in many ways, much like a lot of other Teenage Engineering gear, but it does drums really well. And I think that just the sample memory alone, it's got 64 megabytes of sample memory. It encourages you to use this as a one-shot machine more than anything else. So in terms of the approach for this video, we'll be using one-shots to create a full-on groove. I've got the DigiTac off here to the side. We're gonna be doing some sampling into the EP133 and layering that over the one-shot groove that I put together, just to come up with something a little bit more interesting. And finally, off to the side, I have this EQ pedal, the Boss EQ200. And we'll be using this to sort of gel all of the parts together together within the groove. There are timestamps in the description if you'd like to jump to something specific. There's also affiliate links for the gear mentioned in this video. I would make a small commission from that sale if you use those links, so please do, please use them. Besides watching, it's one of the best things that you could do to help support this channel. The video is also sponsored by DistroKid. If you're looking to officially distribute your music as an independent artist or producer, they're the best choice to go with more reasons on that later in the video. Before actually putting together a groove, the first thing we'll look into is just how to approach layers, like frequencies, layers on the EP133. The thing about working with drums is that you're occupying the entire spectrum, the entire frequency spectrum. And with the EP133, you could split that all up into four parts. So A, I use like low frequencies, so kicks, as I have here. B is for mid frequencies, snares, or claps, and then C, is for hi-hats and perks. And in this case, because we're gonna be sampling, I'm gonna save that for D. Lifting longer samples is just a great way to change the texture of your grooves. The EP133, or pretty much any unit for that matter, is gonna react differently to longer samples as opposed to very short one-shot samples. Especially when you start using the fader for specific parameters like low-pass filter, high-pass filter, which I'm sure we're gonna be using uh, with the longer samples from the DigiTact. In fact, let's just make that the first thing that we do with the DigiTact. So this is the groove we're gonna work with. It might be worth it to take out some parts. Maybe just the kick. You know what, we're gonna leave the kick in because we could take that out through the EP133 with the high pass filter. So I'll drop this into the EP133. I'm gonna hit sample, choose to sample there. And if I hit shift sample, now I'm in chop mode and I'll just chop this manually. Here we go. We have the sample ready. I'll be getting into that later in the video. We're most likely, as I mentioned, gonna be throwing a high pass and low pass just to get it out of the way of other frequencies, other drums within this groove. So I could pull this off to the side now. So we'll go back to A and let's just throw together a groove, my friends. This is my favorite kick all the time. What tempo are we at? 135, my current favorite. Let's start with the kick. So this is cool. I'm gonna tune this one way up though, so sound. That'll be that, maybe turn it down a little bit. Usually what I would do from here is just jump straight to snare and, and go from there. I'm not gonna do that this time. We're going to automate and record some different parameters using the fader into this kick groove. I could even automate and play with things like release. So fader, release, I'm gonna audition this. Let's do that. One, two, three. And that'll be that. I should have mentioned that with this sort of groove, I want that kick to be consistent on all the downbeats, which is why I chose to uh, lower the velocity of that note, which is on the upbeat. Boop, that one. Again, usually my step two is snare. We're gonna move to something different. I'm gonna throw a high pass onto this sample right away. See how this sample fits into this groove.
play around with that high pass still. Maybe even throw a, a, a low pass on there too to cut out. Yeah, some of those highs sound. I'm gonna bring it up though. Cool, I mean, that sounds pretty good as is. Like, is this groove done? Another thing we could do here is automate effects. So what effects do we have here? Um, effects, filter, let's bring this over to distortion. I always go for distortion with drums. So let's just see if we really distorted it, what would that do? I mean, we could automate the distortion, but I'm just gonna leave it as is somewhere around here what that does fader maybe a little bit there we go so now this sample is really occupying like the mids high mids so it leaves tons of space for other stuff to be happening let's move to high hats and high perks let's see what we could do here the obvious choice let's try this one except we'll drop the volume on it sound Excellent. Here we go. One, two, three. <sighs> Definitely gonna add some more perks over top of this. Because this longer form sample is just taking up so much space, I don't wanna add too much with the other parts. With the hi-hats, these two things here, like the, the uh, bongos or whatever, I'm gonna pan those to the right. So how do I do that again? I'm on this sound specifically, shift sound, send, and pan should be, yeah, it's there. So I'll pan both of these, hard right. And maybe even the hi-hats, these ones here. Pan those to the right a little bit as well. So now all the highs are on the right. And right now it sounds a little bit imbalanced, but this is a really musical thing to do to sort of like leave things open for other parts. So now with the snare part, I'll somehow work it in so that I'm panning things a little bit to the left. In my opinion, in terms of higher frequencies, there's just a lot more room for automation. So that's the next thing that we're gonna do. Starting with the release. So fader, release, let's see. Even that just adds so much. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Short, short. Okay, so we've reached the limit of automation that we could do. So we can't push it too far. It's, it kind of reminds me of a pocket operator. There's definitely a limit in how much automation you can actually add in there. I would much rather keep that release on the hi-hats rather than the kick. So that, that's fine, we'll leave the kick as is. Let's go back to the hi-hats, fader, attack. Let's try that, three, four. We'll see what we can do with the snare. We're gonna keep it really simple because I don't want to overload this. Like I might just do that. One, two, three, and. Maybe tune that a little bit lower, so sound. Shift sound, I'm gonna go to trim. I'm gonna trim that sample really short. And we're not gonna add any more rhythm over top of this. Add the second clap, except if I stop it, I'm gonna bring the sample start like way up. So now it's a much softer sample. The transient isn't like that, it's much softer. And so this is the thing that I'm gonna pan to the left to sort of fill out that spot within the spectrum. Here we go. Cool, so that's been added in. 
sound, shift sound, trim, go back to send, and this time, hand it to the left. So that fills in that spot. This is, it's subtle, but you know, we're adding something there. So this gives you an idea of how precise the EP-133 actually is. It's very limited. You have to keep your patterns very simple, especially in terms of automation. If you wanna get really precise with your drum patterns, go with the Diggy Tact. I also just find that this longer sample here makes it sound a little bit more, it gives it a little bit more, like it makes it less square, I guess. The next thing we'll do is over here, we're gonna enhance this groove with some hardware EQ, the EQ200. This is a really simple EQ pedal. Basically all we're gonna do is just boost the lows. Oh yeah, some of those lows here, maybe take out some of the low mids. And definitely add some highs here as well. Yes. It makes it sound like a completely different groove, like without, oh, it adds such a difference. And the cool thing about the EQ200 with the setting that I have is that each channel is different. So this is the left side, channel A is left, channel B is right. So if I wanted to change some of these around a little bit, right? So let's say on the right, I wanted to really cut more, be a little bit more um, exaggerated with the low mids, cut out some of that mud. I can certainly do that. This changes the stereo image and makes it a little bit more, I guess, complex. And going back to this idea of being musical and intentional with the way that you pan things, you have that same sort of approach when you EQ left and right slightly different. I find this EQ pedal to just be really musical in the sense that you leave space out for other elements, maybe melodic elements later on in your track. But even if you decide to just keep this standard and EQ both sides in the, in the same way. It's still really beneficial to have this on the go, quick EQ for your grooves. So I've come up with a pretty sick groove. The next step for me is to sample it. Like, so how would I approach doing that? Before going on to that step though, let's talk about distributing your music with DistroKid. In terms of what's new, they recently released a smartphone app, which makes checking your important DistroKid stats easy and accessible. The app is now available on Android through the Play Store. Essentially everything that you've been able to do on the DistroKid desktop app, you're now able to do through your smartphone. In fact, here's a list of key features that the app offers you. You might wanna pause it now if you wanna check them out. In today's day and age, we all know how many hats we have to wear as artists and producers. It can just be a lot, so write the music produce the music. Then you've got to create content to promote it a few weeks before it's released. Then you've got to continue creating content after it's been released to promote it. It's a lot, and I'm not saying that DistroKid does all of this work for you, but they do make it a lot easier for us with the free promotional tools that they offer. The one I use most is Hyperfollow. It's essentially a free landing page or a link tree. It's super clean. You could link maybe your latest video, your latest single, other important links you'd like to lead people to. I also use promo cards whenever I release a single. Just select the single that you would like to promote and it'll auto generate a few different uh, options for you to choose from. Go with DistroKid, it's just over $20 a year to release unlimited music to all major streaming platforms. You keep 100% of your streaming royalties. So many other tools that they offer for someone who's independent, they're, they're made for us. And there is a discount linked in the description of this video if you would like to join. Anyways, back to the video. So as I mentioned, the next step here, now that we have this groove would be to sample it. And this just goes right back to organizing your frequencies. So obviously you have your low frequencies here. It's all organized for you already. In this case, I would just play this groove, sample just the lows, and then maybe the lows with the snare drum, or maybe the lows with just the sample or maybe just these together, right? So I'm just finding all of these different combinations to uh, sample with. And because this is a two bar groove, I would make two bar samples. Eventually I'd get to the whole groove sample that as well. So you get my point here. It's really whatever you think sounds best or whatever fits best for your music or your set. For me, I'm using the EP133 as a composition tool to sample and then eventually drop into Ableton. For me, Ableton just ends up being like the master spaceship <laughs> where I put everything, where I drop all of my samples to eventually organize them into scenes and perform them. These are literally the building blocks that I've been using to come up with a performance like this.